you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss the next one. Hi guys, and welcome back to my dark room. This video is gonna be about making your own safe lights for your dark room. And I've come across this video because in my last video, I mentioned that the Kodak Beehive light behind me in the corner wasn't giving enough light around for you guys to see when I'm making videos in my dark room. And after that video, I had a message from uh, Film Love Photography and Instagrammer, who's also got a great uh, website and blog. And he sent me an image of, or he sent me a link to his blog and said, I've made my own darkroom lights. Um, have a look and see what you think. And it was basically a, an orange lunchbox f from Ikea. And at first I thought, it can't work, surely. Then it made sense. I thought, well, it's, it's orange and th and this guy's had a go and he's, he's got it working. He says it's, it's worked well for him. He's done his tests. I thought, blimey, that's a great idea. But unfortunately, there isn't no Ikea, uh, nowhere near where I live. So um, I did think about going online and ordering it. It was only three quid. Um, but then the postage will cost me another few quid on top of that, probably. But uh, I'll put it on the back burner anyway and, and just thought, you know, I'll keep getting by with the BI Live B B whatever it's called at the Kodak beehive light behind me um, until the other day I was potting around in the garden and I saw my old orange bucket sitting on the floor funny enough next to my darkroom shed and I picked it up and cleaned it off in the bath with some hot water and some soap and I thought I wonder if this would work I wonder if I could actually use a, a bucket an orange bucket as a darkroom safe light so uh, I was looking at the bucket and I thought to myself, what sort of light can I put in? And then I remembered that a few years ago, I bought a couple of uh, Fire Glow red lights. I think they were 100 watt, they're quite bright, from a dark room. Uh, just be interested to see if they would work. And they didn't work, they was way too bright and they completely fogged the paper. Uh, but nevertheless, I got them back out the uh, drawer and I've decided to put one inside a bucket, fix some wiring to it, put it in my dark room and started to do some tests. <laughs> Now some people might say, well, why, why are you bothering trying to make darkroom lights? Just go and buy them online. Well, they're not exactly cheap, or not what I would call cheap, not for a decent one anyway. And to be honest with you, if I didn't have my uh, this channel, then I'd just be using that little tiny beehive light all the time. The only reason I'm trying this is because I want to try and get a little bit more uh, light into the dark room when I'm making videos for you guys to see what I'm doing in certain areas um, where that light can't shine onto. And in the past, what I've done is pointed that light in, in different directions to try and show you, albeit I know that there's a possibility that I'm fogging the paper. So um, what I decided to do is to get these buckets, stick that red light in, do some tests and see if it's possible that I can use an orange bucket and a light as a darkroom safe light and see how safe it is at the same time. So you can see this is the bucket that I found in my darkroom. It's orange and this is the red light bulb. This is some foam that I cut out from um, some sheets of foam that I had just to uh, make it secure and suspend it in the middle. And it also stops any light coming from underneath. And I simply now just put the bucket on the wall using a couple of screws. And there you have it. I've got a safe light, hopefully. So I've got the orange bucket and I've got my red light bulb, but the first thing I need to do is to make some tests to make sure that my safe light in the dark room isn't gonna fog my paper, for, especially for the areas that I'm working in. So uh, that's what I'm gonna be showing you in this video. Whether it's a right or wrong way, I don't know. It's my way and it's worked in the past. So that's the, uh, the route I'm gonna take for testing uh, my, my bucket safe lights for the dark room to give you guys more light when I'm making my videos so you can see more of what I'm doing in here so this is the orange bucket that i found in the garden and this is the <laughs> it looks a bit ridiculous and big but it works trust me um and this video isn't about hey guys this is the materials you need this is what i'm doing as i said to give you guys more light in the dark room it's just a cheap and cost effective way of me to do that so i can spend my money on more paper and chemicals and whatnot but uh anyway so yeah just a normal bucket and it's plugged in and in here i've got some uh, foam that I use around the dark room to pin stuff up on. I've cut that out, put it at the top, and I've put a hole in the middle, shoved the light bulb through there, and Bob's your uncle, there's me safe light. Um, so I've already done tests with this, but unfortunately it was too bright. So I then went off back down to the uh, DIY store.
do red light bulbs? No, no. Like, do, no, they don't do, do red ones. light bulbs anymore. Oh, no. no. You oh. do changing bulbs, but not actual, like, red. Oh. Well, what am I going to do? What's it called? Do you put a fire or something like that? Or... It's going to be dark room. And I come back with more buckets. I tried a second test with a second bucket over it and I was still getting fogged paper. I then tried a third test with another bucket over the top and that worked. My paper was no longer getting fogged. Now you could turn around and say, well, just use one bucket and a less lower wattage bulb. But um, that's the only bulb I've got. I did try one of these and even these were too bright. And then I made another one as well from, from the results that I got from that one. Um, I made exactly the same thing. Again, you can see over this side. Three buckets again. There's the first one. It's screwed to the wall. Screw up there. Screwed down there. And I've put the two buckets over the top just to make it uh, safe. And if you're sitting there thinking, well, this is a hazard because it's sitting over the sink. This ain't going to fall down. And uh, <laughs> and if anything does splash up, there's a bucket protecting the light bulb underneath. There's no water going to get inside this from any splashes. So I'm quite happy uh, that that is safe positioned above the sink. Some people may beg to differ, but um, that's not that's not going to uh, get any water inside that whatsoever. And also you might be thinking, well, how hot does this get? I'd actually like to get some LED fire glow bulbs for in here, and I've also already taken it off and did a 30 minute test and then took it off and felt the foam the foam was only just slightly warm it wasn't hot so again the light bulb's not gonna it's not gonna be a fire hazard with that foam or with this plastic bucket over the top um, so we'll see how we go with that and this is my original safe light which is a Kodak Beehive safe light and uh, and I've always used this this is the safe light that I've always used I've done various tests on it before in the past and if I, if I shine the light directly onto the paper on the baseboard, um, it, it, if I leave it long enough, it will fog the paper. But unfortunately, because this is the only uh, video light I've been using, the, the only uh, safe light I've been using for my videos, now and again, I have to point it in certain directions for you guys to see. So that's the whole idea of me having these buckets in, so I don't have to do that. So I'll just go through what I did and the procedure I did to test these bucket safe lights. Uh, I've already taken off two of the buckets. It's not a wind up guys, by the way, I'm laughing because it just sounds funny. Um, it's not April Fool's or anything. But uh, I've taken off two buckets and I'm left with just one as it was the other day when I first um, tried this out. So I'll just point the camera over towards the enlarger and show you some other tests that I did. And of course it did fail because that's why one bucket wasn't good enough. And um, I'll show you the test that I did, why I did it like that. And then we'll get on, I'll put three buckets on and show you the difference. I'm not going to go into the second bucket because that failed as well, so that'd be a waste of time. But I'll just show you the initial test um, that I did and then show you the other tests that I did as well. So in a nutshell, I'll just show you um, what I did from the start. Uh, first of all, I had to, now this was all in um, complete darkness and I didn't have any red lights on whatsoever. What I did, first of all, I did a uh, test print here with one second on the larger set to F22. So I did one second, two second, three second, four second, five second, and six seconds. Okay, and then once I developed, stopped and fixed, that's the result that I got. And from that, I chose number three, which was a nice light gray as my rock to stand on for my um, tests on the safe lights. So after knowing how many seconds I needed to sensitize a paper for to give me that light gray color, which was three seconds, it was then time to make my first um, test for the red light. And this was done again in complete darkness. I haven't even turned the red light on yet at all. Um, I'm feeling my way around and using these bars, I could tell where the edge of the paper was. It also kept the paper still. And I kind of just measured like so. Well, right, okay, that's where I need to be. And then I've just put, used my pen and I put a little tiny dot in the corner knowing that that was the um, going to be the first increment with the red light on. So I left that there covered and I turned the red light on and put the timer on for one minute. Once the timer had reached one minute, I came down and let it run for two minutes. Then three minutes. And the last minute was the fourth minute. Where I did it again. Then I turned um, all the red lights off 
and in complete darkness I developed, stopped and fixed this piece of paper. The last bit of paper there didn't get exposed to any red light whatsoever so that's still my, my, um, my light grey that I exposed on the enlarger and that's still my rock that I'm standing on there. And you can see that's what's happened with this one bucket light. Um, that's light grey. It should, if it worked, if it was safe, it would be grey all along. But what's happened is that's one minute of red light, two minutes of red light, three minutes of red light, and four minutes of red light. You can see it's fogged the paper. So that would be absolutely no. That red light would be absolutely no use um, if I had my paper out for for even one minute two minutes, three minutes, four minutes um, working. It would just fog the paper. So something has to change. So the next test I did, obviously I did it on, on, two, on two buckets as well, and that failed. I got similar test results, but they were slightly uh, lighter. And uh, this was the test with three buckets. You can see I've done exactly the same again. That's where I started. And that's where I finished. And you can see the difference between the two. If I put them out so that you can't see any different tones in the bottom one at all but obviously in the top one you can so that shows me that's one light means only one lights on I've got to test all three lights and make sure all three lights are running to be safe so uh, that's the test for the first bucket light now I know that these three buckets over that red light um, I've already done the test, it's not going to fog my paper, it didn't fog my paper on the test after, after four minutes. Um, I could have gone five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes and done even longer tests, but I've decided to go for four minutes. And it hasn't fogged the paper, so I'm quite happy that this is going to work for when I'm making prints and showing you guys. I can have this on and give you a bit more light. I then went off and made another one of these that I showed you above the sink. So now I've got two lights. So the next part of the test was to have both of them lights running at the same time. We haven't even come to the, the beehive light yet. I'm just having these two bucket lights working. And uh, I started the tests over again. Exactly the same test. You see it says two lights, test number two, and I've got no change in tone at all. So um, I did exactly the same test. So I'm happy now that I can have those two bucket lights, this one and that one over there above the sink running when I'm making prints. I'm happy that I've got two safe lights working. Now what about the Kodak one? So I now need to work on the Kodak one. And I did exactly the same test with that, but this time round I exposed the paper for three seconds like normal from the enlarger. And uh, this is all in the dark. And then I covered half, whoop, I covered half of the paper and then turned the red light on for four minutes. Um, just wanted to see what would happen. And that's what happened, my paper fogged after four minutes uh, whether it will fog after one minute two minutes three minutes I don't know but I don't care I don't want it to fog um, up to four minutes so I need to change the position of that um, the Kodak beehive light so it's not coming over this way so that's what I did I started to change the position of it and then I remembered that the, the bulb inside the Kodak beehive light was quite bright if I remember I put that in there um, when I started making videos so I took that out and put a lower wattage bulb in there and I repositioned the Kodak beehive light as well so it wasn't kind of pointing over this way I don't need it over this way now and that's the result I came up with um, after four minutes I did exactly the same thing projected three minutes uh, three seconds under the enlarger and then covered half the paper turn the red lights on for four minutes um, stop uh, develop stop and fixed all in the dark and uh, once it had fixed turn the lights on and I had no fogging on the paper at all so um, I was quite happy with that result that my, my bucket lights are in position. I've got the three buckets over each one. They're not fogging the paper after four minutes. The Kodak Beehive light I've now got in position. And with all three lights running, I'm not fogging my paper. That is on this area only. I then had to do further tests over near my development trays because pretty much that's the, the longest part where my paper's going to be. Once I've, I've done a 30 second projection here, the paper's going to go over straight into those trays. And uh, I did those tests, uh, again, the same tests, and I got the same results. I didn't get any uh, fogging on the paper at all, so I was really happy with that. So this is kind of the light I was working in before. And uh, what I'd have to do in, in the editing, in the post-production was... To, to brighten the levels up so you guys could see a little bit more around with what I'm doing. But you know, it's my BI Live uh, light. I've got it shining over this side, which was 
possibly you know fogging my fogging my paper um, over time and that was only purely just pointing this in different directions so you guys can see what I'm doing and when I'm in here on my own without the video cameras I'd usually have this pointed down there like that I can see perfectly but you guys can't see on the camera uh, the sensor is not that sensitive so um, a little bit tricky but now if I turn the other lights on hopefully you'll see where we're going so I'm just going to turn the light on over this over the sink area there's one light and I'm going to turn the other light on there's two lights now hopefully it's brightened up my dark room for making videos So I've tried to make this a short video. I didn't want to go on and on and on and on. Um, but I was in here for absolute hours just testing these safe lights and trying to come up with ideas of, of how to try and make them a little bit safer uh, for, for me working in the darkroom. And don't forget, this isn't... Um, if I didn't have this channel, then I wouldn't be bothering with these bucket lights or trying to get extra light into the darkroom. I'm quite happy with that BI Live, uh, Be Beehive light. Beehive Live? <laughs> I'm quite happy with that Kodak Beehive light behind me. Um, it doesn't give off a great deal of light in the dark room, but it's safe and I can still work around um, safely without tripping over things and I can still see what I'm doing and work my way around. But uh, for the channel, I just thought it'd be great to get some extra lights. And I have thought about it before, but they are quite costly. And like I said at the start of the video, you know, um, I don't want to be wasting my money on, on, on extra lighting and stuff like that and uh, I can, when, I can, when I'm already spending enough on paper and chemicals and whatnot. And also, I've only done tests for my Kentmere paper that I use quite often. If I'm going to be using different papers or different graded papers or whatever, or fibre papers, then the sensible thing is just to retest and make sure that these lights are going to be safe for those papers because different papers react uh, to different safe lights. So um, that's what I'm going to do the next time I get another a different batch of paper is just test and make sure that these lights are going to work for that paper as well. Otherwise, I won't know what's going on when I start printing. So uh, I've got to thank Film Love Photography for private messaging me about making your own safe lights with that sandwich box from Ikea. Uh, like I said, I couldn't. We haven't got an Ikea on the island and I wasn't going to get one posted to me uh, for, for £3. That would probably cost me more than that for um, the postage. But I quite enjoyed uh, improvising uh, with the buckets and, and seeing how I got on. And uh, I'm quite happy that I've now got these in, in the darkroom, giving more light for you guys to see what I'm doing. So thanks very much, Film Love Photography on Instagram, for sending me that idea. I really do appreciate it. And I'll also put some links in the description below to Film Love Photography and the video that he's got on his page. Have a look at that, because this guy goes into great depth and detail about testing your safe lights. And I'm sure there's others out there on YouTube as well. This is the way that I'm doing it. I'm quite happy with, with, uh, with the results that I've, uh, that I've achieved out of it. It's quite been quite successful successful for me um, but you know do your homework have a little look around read some stuff and uh, have a look at what others do and make your mind up from there if you've got any comments about this video or any improvements uh, do let us know apart from the size of the buckets yeah they are a bit big look a bit silly but if they're going to work for me when I'm making my videos that's fantastic like I said if I didn't have this channel I wouldn't bother with the buckets I'd stick to the uh, the Kodak lamp behind me so anyway guys uh, appreciate your subscriptions likes and all that stuff especially my patreons that help me do all this stuff in the darkroom and I'll catch you next time If you like this video please hit the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss the next one.